All right, guys, this is the Matty Ice Show. Um, it is Friday. I have Jay Real, the realist, right here um, in the studio. You're going to do a performance today. Actually, we're going to do a freestyle. Yes, sir. At the end yes. of the interview, I'm going to, um, at the end of the interview, I'm going to drop a beat for you. We're going to have you go crazy. I want to have my audience um, get to hear you. So we have this book here that I think you wrote. Um, it's published too. Yes, sir. Self-published. So this is a lot about you, which we're going to get into in a little bit. Um, I definitely want to hear your story. Where are you from? Los Angeles, California, South Central. South Central. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Do you like LA? <laughs> it's yeah. your hometown. I mean, that's where I'm from. You know, so I love Los Angeles. It's just a bitter, a bittersweet relationship we have. What you mean, bittersweet? Well, I mean, it's like, it's like the woman you love, but she always hurts you, but you always come home. Cause you love her so much, you know what I'm saying. So how long did you live in LA for? All my life. And then you moved out here. Then I moved to Arizona probably four and a half years ago. What's changed for you? Opportunity, man. Fucking Los Angeles is crowded, man. It's very packed. You know, minimal opportunity. So Arizona got a lot of opportunity, man. I feel like there's a, I feel like there's a lot of opportunity in LA. The only difference is I think there's a shitload of competition and then a shitload of politics. So I think if you can maneuver around those things on the on the entertainment side, yes. You well, know, that's what we're doing, right? Because you got the you got the hub. But as far as what I mean by opportunities, because when you when you can get to a place where you can steady your mental, you know what I'm saying, and you can you can bring your life to some type of stability, then you can go and attack all that stuff with forward thinking but when you just compound it with all of this adversity all the time you got all this pressure and then you're actually right there and then you got to deal with everything you can't breathe you get suffocated and then you become stagnant and it becomes one big circle and so moving out here gave me a lot of opportunity to be able to move in a way that I couldn't move at home even though all the moves are at home because I'm at home every other week I I go to L.A. every three or four days I'm in L.A. And then your, I'm back here. Your yeah, family so still says it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. All of my family still in Los Angeles. So I can relate to you, you know, as far as being stagnant. I was I grew up in Illinois, Chicago area, and um, my whole life, 27 years. I've been out here now. This is going on seven years out here. And um, I guess I was stagnant, too. So that's why I left. I wanted to come out here to have a better life. It was the best decision I ever made to get out here. I started this show, you know, halfway through. Um, meeting a lot of great people that are in this room right now. Man, you, congratulations so, you on know. all your accolades, man, and all, all of your accomplishments, man, so far. You know Definitely. what? Just being consistent with everything we do, bro. I, I try to stay consistent with this platform. I try to interview every week multiple artists um, and bring on people like you guys. You get, Without you guys, I wouldn't have a show, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I always credit the artist, um, and then I'll credit my hustle, you feel me? Got you. Without but you. I mean, with, without you, we wouldn't have a voice. Feel you so oh. it's a fair it's a fair exchange there's you know there's plenty of platforms though you know there's plenty of platforms out there that you can go ahead and do your stuff on i think people gravitate to my show a little bit more because i'm all about the artists i don't bring in the outside drama Correct. you can come here you can perform you can freestyle and i promote the artists that's what this is about that's Correct. what this show's about bro um and that's why you're here hey, we're gonna get your performance in later get a freestyle in later bro yes, do you have um projects out right now on on all streaming platforms man i got so many projects out it don't make no sense <laughs> I just, I, I mean, I do this for that. I mean, might be true too. <laughs> man, I, it don't make no sense, man. I got uh, my most recent project that's circulating is uh, Too Real, featuring uh, AD um, at its AD on Instagram. Um, he actually is one of the co-hosts of the No Jumper. Okay, no podcast. shit, nice. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. He's the only brother on there. There you go. <laughs> so I think I've seen him. I know he's. Yeah, yeah. So um, we just put out. We just collabed on a joint. Um, that's circulating right now. It's doing very well. Um, it's playing at LA clubs. It's playing out here at Arizona clubs, and um, just gravitating towards the vibe. But I got a lot of personal stuff as far as like um, singles that I'm putting out right now. Just kind of throwing stuff out there, seeing what the fan base like. You know what? Finding what your they, sound that the fans fuck with. Yeah, you know what I'm saying because people over here like I got um, one song changes. It's more going to be on the level of, like, how I'm going to come today, you know what I'm saying, with the bars, gravitating more towards the realness of what we deal with on a daily basis. And then I got, you know, stuff like, uh, you know, Loud, which is like, you know, Smoke Song, which I collaborated with uh, Sling Johnson, who plays uh, Black Jesus 
on the show um, Black Jesus and uh, for the Smoke Yours crew. And so, you know, that's uh, all about weed, you know. So it's just about where you fit in, what you feel. Music is a feel, you feel me? So whatever you is, you know, we make freeway music, we make chill music, we make hype music. You know, I'm about indulging in what the fans want to be a part of, you know what I'm saying? I, I can't I can't say I'm a particular artist with a particular style and you got to come to me, you know? I, I want to come to you, okay, what you like? Okay, well, you like alternative music? All right, well, let me find an alternative group to collab with. You like reggae? Okay, I got a cousin who's from, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let me get on this and that. Also got songs with cats from Poland, South Africa, South France, Dubai, Iran, you know, I've collaborated with cats all over the you place. Got artists from Iran too. I ran. I got a song no right shit. now. Um, it's called Scorpion. Shout out Mazul, my homeboy Mazul. He reached out to me many years ago. We collaborated, um, even with, and it's it's weird, bro, because even with all their restrictions, right, bro, to a, to us as far as like America and Iran's all their bands on social media, they got a lot of different bands. It was work he was doing. With this music stuff, bro, yeah, that could have that put talk- him into. And I was trying to pay him, like, because we put these songs out on, 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 uh, platforms, on streaming platforms. So, and, and he has rights to his his parts of the of the money for the music. I can't even pay him because they don't allow certain. Well, Iran and America have some serious tensions. Obviously. Exactly, yeah. and so like PayPal and. Certain things that we use to transfer money across the country, they're not privy to. They're not allowed to they're, have. They got great people there. The, the citizens, yeah, are, the, the, the citizens, citizens are great. great. The government's yeah. a fucking hell a nightmare, bro. But these, but I'm saying, as far as how, how this, how this music penetrates, like looking at a situation like that, we going behind enemy lines doing this stuff. Most like, definitely, we really that's why I was like, chances. damn, we got a track in Iran. Yeah, I got a track in Iran. Look at that. It's, it's Scorpion, J. Rudder, really, Mazul. I'm sure, he's uh, a great artist. Mazul. And and honestly, it took me two months to figure out what the hell he was saying. I had to go Google Translate, find some people and all, because I, I don't. And you got to trust them too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know I'm saying, but everything everything fit. So S- let me ask you this, bro. You being from LA. Your whole life, um, we lost two monumental people recently. The past couple of years in LA, what we lost Nipsey, obviously R.I.P. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nip, and then we lost Kobe. Um, mm-hmm. Kobe was both of those losses were really hard for me. Kobe, for some reason, hit me a little bit differently. I think just because he lost his daughter, the other people in the helicopter, how right. it happened, they both hit me really, really hard. Right. Um, what was that like for you, finding out um, two legends of LA passed in awful ways? I knew I knew the Nipsey question was gonna come up. Um, Kobe, first and foremost, he he was a forerunner for our city. Kobe could have did anything he wanted to, anywhere he wanted to. He had that type of cloud power, influence. He could have played for anything. He could have owned the team. He could have did whatever he wanted to do. But he decided to to ally and and put his loyalty in Los Angeles. And inspire the youth, And, too. and inspire the youth. And he went out, he did a lot of things. You might see Kobe at Roscoe's. You know what I'm saying? You might pull up at a Roscoe's and see Kobe in there eating. Kobe wasn't that type of dude. He fucked with Javier's. That was his favorite restaurant. Exactly. That's my you favorite know what I'm saying? Restaurant. So that love run a little bit different than the Nipsey thing. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I was there I was there when he got drafted. I was I was – Outside of the, you watched him grow up and win all the championships. Correct, you know what I'm saying. As a kid, seventeen year old, I was on Figueroa with Shaq seeing it. We we was on Figueroa, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, on bus stops, standing on top of bus stops while the parade was going. You we grew up watching him on TV. You know what I'm saying, right? watching. I was I would go down to the to the to the at the Staples Center at the time. It's your Michael Jordan, Staples bro. Center now, you know what I'm saying. Exactly, it's my Jordan. Right. We would go down and watch him. So it's a different type of love. Nipsey is more. It's more politics on the emotions on that. Because I can never take what he brought to L.A. as far as what uh, of an influence of what young black men could do differently being in an area where they're stifled and their foot is on their neck and they ain't got nowhere to go. So he, was, he, he brought a beautiful example of how the roads can grow out of the concrete. You know what I'm saying? But I don't... We from different sides of the track, so I don't have no... You feel me? Real it's, close friends that were close to him, or no? Nah, I got no a million people. I mean, me and Nipsey was on mixtapes together. I got mixtapes where I'm—he's number twenty-four. I'm the number twenty-fifth person on the mixtape. Like I grew up, 
the seven to sevens and all that. I went to Chris Shaw High School for a moment. Like I knew his his big homies, S Dome and 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 Green Eye. Like I right, right, when right. you from that area, sure. you know what I'm saying. You, 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 but we from different sides of the track. And what I mean to say is like there's a reason why Schoolboy Q and Nipsey Hussle, two of the most prominent LA artists to date, never did a collaboration. It's because they was from two sides of the track. You know what I'm saying? It School was a Boy lot Q, of bro. it was a lot of friction. It's a lot of friction. So I say my emotion in that I can't say that I'm heart torn because Nipsey got killed, because that's what happens when you from that place. You know what I'm saying? That's what happens when you participate in those type of activities. You know what I'm saying? I got you. I just think that his death happened so senselessly and so, like, just during the day, what, 2 o'clock? Random. Fucking random. And, it, and, it was and just that's too the, random same, and and too that's the same way, like, you know. He wasn't looking. There was no beef going on. Really we got there. Slim 400. You know what I'm saying? We just lost Slim. We just lost. I mean, I can name a lot of dudes. You know what I'm saying? I'm from the land. Like, this is what happens. Every two days, we lose a two or three guys to this senseless nonsense. And that's why the respect of what he represents can never be shaken. He brought something to the city in a time where everybody felt like it was all breaking apart. And he went and and went out and j got co-signed by Jay-Z, got co-signed by Diddy. He did all of that stuff, even separated with the help of Big U. You know what I'm saying? Even from apart from that help, even though that's where the start came from. Like, I run deep in this music LA stuff, so we can go into deep conversation, but I don't want to take up too much time talking about other people. I'm uh, I'm happy that he was able to get his Victory Lap album out. Correct. And uh, the, the people got that, just like King Von got his album out. That was um, so influential. For sure. Bro, it was influential for me. You know what I'm saying? It was so influential for me just to be able to see where he was going and what direction he was going. He. He will be missed. The influence he was putting down will be missed. You know what I'm saying? Rest in peace to Kobe, the Mamba, um, and Neighborhood Nip. Let me um, ask you this, bro. You did some time. Oh, yeah. I did a little bit. How much time did you do? I, you know what I'm saying? Uh, about four. Straight? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. you got out, what, 19? Mm-hmm. Well, not to get into the case, bro. Um are you done with everything now? It's all over with? Everything's past you? I mean, you know, it's never going to be past. You know I mean, saying, you might have something on your record, but yeah, it's yeah, past yeah, you as far as the me. courts are done, yeah, all that shit. All of that is done. Yeah, all court dates, all of that, all that probation, all that stuff. So with. I had somebody that was on the show um, that was incarcerated a little, maybe a, a few episodes ago. And I always wanted to know, bro, what was that feeling like um, the minute you walked out of jail after doing the four years? Um, the first time you just put on some real clothes and got out of there, bro, and you didn't have to listen to those guards telling you what to do or anything like that, bro. Bro, the, the appreciation is an abundance. What's that feeling? It's like, not bro? about it's not about the clothes. It's not about putting on normal clothes. It's 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 the being able to walk to the closet. It's not about eating a regular food. It's be able to go to the to refrigerate it, being able to open it yourself. Pick what the fuck you want out. It's not about going outside and getting fly and seeing somebody. It's about walking outside. It's about the fact that I can walk out this door and I can look at trees. I can listen to birds. I can go outside and feel the grass. Because those are the type of freedoms that are taken away from you when you're incarcerated. It's not It's not the, oh, I can't do this. I can't move the way I want to move. Oh, I'm in here stuck, complacent. No, it's the, it's the simple human. Things in life human. that you would never think about every exactly. day. Exactly. It's, it's your human rights that are taken away and often violated for sure not just taken away but they're violated sure. in such a way to where your humanity is if you can't mentally kid it if you can't hold on to what you're you, gonna break you have you're gonna break bro and what's gonna happen is you're gonna go outside and you ain't gonna be able to stand it out there you got to go back so the first moment you knew you were getting out you walked out of there who picked you up Shit, the, uh the, the bus where did you go? Right to the family? Yeah, I had to, man. Of course. I had to go to the midgets, man. So to the thug rats. Did you we, were you able to sleep that night when you were getting out? Nah, man. I don't think I slept for a minute. I don't think I slept for like two or three days. So it was, it was somewhat of an emotional experience walking out of there, you'd have to say. It was the more, like I said, the more emotional experience walking in the house to the midgets, seeing them see me just... The whole everything broke Prices, down. Bro. Everything stopped. For sure. Prices. And it's and it's unfortunate at the same time that it was beautiful. You know what I'm saying? And I never wish it again. 
hopefully, you know, you did time when you were younger. So that's past you now. Now you got your whole life ahead of you. Yeah, you know, so you got so much ahead of you now. And, you you know, you went through, you, you paid your price to society, whatever you did. Or maybe you didn't do, whatever. Um, but you paid your price, and um, that's what it's about. And hopefully you never go back. Correct. The goal is not to be in there, bro. The goal is to be Correct. out. Correct. There's no money in there, you know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> all right. You as an artist... What's the deal for you this year? Are you going to be dropping more singles with videos? Are you going to be doing an album, another EP? What's we're doing what's we're doing visuals. We're working on visuals. I got one EP um, called Winter Circle, and it's it's funny that we talked about we talked about the Victory Lap because after you come out the Victory Lap, where do you go to? You go into the Winter Circle. So it's like continuing that LA based story. You know what I'm saying? That South Central story that that Nipsey started to write. You know what I'm saying? Because we all have to continue to tell the story. So uh, that's going to be a five-song EP. I'm doing visuals now. Um, actually, me and my son have a song. We got a single. How old is your son? 13. So he's already getting the game yeah, right now. He's got right. He's 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 crazy. Uh, shout out Black Vane. That's what he he chose the name, Black Vane. You might be managing one day. You don't know. Oh, man, I, <laughs> this music, you know, this music thing, I'm not going to lie, bro. I've been doing this a long time. Show. My first show was in 1999. So I was uh, I was fucking 12 years old then. My first show, bro. How so, old are you? 36. Okay. So I was like 14 or 15 myself. I'm 34. Yeah, so yeah, I was like 14 or 15 myself. I opened up for a used car lot. It was a, a used car lot. I I was just out there on the stage doing my thing, you know what I'm saying? Sure. You know what I'm saying? Calling myself Jay Real. And trying to keep myself as authentic as possible by calling myself J Real because my name is Jarrell. So just J Real. You know what I'm saying? So I tried to keep it authentic as possible. But as far as the music, man, you know, and as you know, even doing this, we start off with such compassion and such heart for this stuff. And then after doing it for so long, it becomes work. It becomes a business to get up and, and promote and and manage and book and I, make sure that you're vibrant. And so in that travel somewhere, I kind of, I lost a lot of the heart for it because it became business. And in business, you can't be emotional. You can't you can't have heart in business. It's, it's what about this, bro? C. What about when your business is bringing you the bread that you love? Well, yeah, mm -hmm. even, even with the money, bro, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I manifest. I'm in a manifestation now. At this point in my life, I've received everything I've asked for, even down to the point of children, amount of children. I need your many. shit, then, bro. Bro, I'm telling you, this it, it's real, bro. Practice it, like practice. It's dangerous too. At the same time, don't get me wrong. Because I believe just in that. Like I believe in can, manif Just like you can ask for it, you can you can f some stuff off by asking for something you don't need. But but in general, what I'm saying is like even when the bread come, you you lose pieces of yourself in doing this. And so my point is, what I wanted to do is I wanted to get back to the heart of it. I wanted to get back to that that pop feeling when you walk in the studio and you get in the booth and you going crazy in that thing. You spitting for 45 minutes straight and don't know what you said, got to listen back. And everybody in there like, who is this? You know, that energy, that vibe. It became less and less because it became more business. It became more strategical. It became more, okay, these visuals got to be this way. Or what's going on in the culture right now? Okay, I got to vibe. I got to have these color schemes. This, this, It became more of a grind. And so what I did is I started to back up off of that. And that's why I put out so many singles. I got like 45 singles out right now. Bro, the wave is a lot of artists are dropping singles with, with videos right now. That's like the, that's, what's, that's what the move is right now. Yeah, that's the... And to be, who said this to me? I don't know who it was. I don't know who said it to me, but somebody said, why drop an album? What was exactly what they said? There's no reason to drop an album if um, the people aren't demanding it. Somebody told me that. Like, if the fans aren't demanding an album, don't drop yet. If they don't want, if they don't want that, if they're not craving demanding work, an album yeah. from you, wait. Then just drop the singles. Right. Keep feeding them singles Correct. slowly, but slowly, and then find and then out find what out what they what they're doing. No, and that's I, why I, you I feed them that. different category. You know, you feed them different Spoon categories feed them, of bro. music, and that's it. And then some people take to it. Some people don't. The focus is 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 weird because the focus is not to lose focus. You feel me? The the hope is not to lose hope people so worried about the end game people so worried about the end result that they they lose focus on the journey um 
what it kind I know we we said that earlier when we talk about Kanye talk Sorry. about other people but I think I heard some Kanye say about uh, he took a, a long ass train trip took like hour and a half or something for him to get to where he was and it, instead of being impatient like oh this is and, and, and I can't wait to get to where I'm going. He enjoyed the ride. He just enjoyed looking out the window. He enjoyed the, the scenery. He enjoyed That's being it. around people he had never been. And so what he did is he took his impatience and he turned it into the trip. He turned it into something for him to do. It, instead of being impatient, he turned his impatience into something. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I'm learning to do in this music. You know what I'm saying? It's... it's Stop being impatient. Stop waiting on the end game. We all want the plaques. We all want the money. We we all want the fame. We all want the whatever, the free this, the that, and this and that. But that's because in our lives, we don't have that. If we had a million dollars, we wouldn't be worried about grinding so hard in the music to get a million dollars. You want two million. You want two at that point. You want two at that point. But you ain't going to be living a lifestyle of a, of a $50 dude if you got a million dollars trying to get to two million. You know what's crazy, bro? Is I know a couple people, too, that are in this situation. I know people that got millions of dollars or at least a million dollars mm -hmm. and they're living like they're broke. You feel me? Like they got a car payment that's 1500 a month. They got a mortgage that's six or 7000 a month and they don't got any fucking money, bro. So I think for real, it's just all in perspective of how you spend your loot and um, how you save it too, you know what I'm saying? Cause and the same thing with the progression of the music. It's all about perspective, you know what I'm saying? Either you're going to be rich. I got so much knowledge and so much stuff, so many bars that I put in my songs, man, people are going to be listening to my stuff 10 years from now, just now getting it. People, my kids are going to be, I leave messages to my children in this music. So when I'm gone and they they got grandchildren, they can, they'll finally get it. Like, damn, my pops was on some, damn. Like, this is some, some, some history books, some literal stuff, you know what I'm saying? This is the stuff that, that wins the poetry, you know what I'm saying? We're not just talking about up in Blickies and doing whatever, you know what I'm saying? We're talking about etched in stone and etched hieroglyphic. I got these things printed on me. These things are printed on me, but they're somewhere on this earth and they've been there for thousands of years. We don't know how long, bro. We still trying to figure out what some of this stuff is talking about in some of these places. Don't you want your bars to be that way? Don't you want somebody in a futuristic civilization to find your bars a hundred thousand years from now and say, this is a Bible I'm reading? These are, are manuscripts to, to life? That's how I feel about some artists People are never getting into that. That's how I feel about Sugar Free. Some of it, even though it's controversial what he's talking about and, it, and it, it's derogatory towards women, whatever you want to category, the way he puts certain stuff into metaphorical words, that, it's, it's biblical. It's, it's the way people wrote Bible. So your favorite artist? One of my favorite artists that I'm waiting to collaborate with. I'm, I'm right there. I got everybody around him. I got Cocaine on the song. I got um, Schoolboy on. The, I got a lot. Of, I got a lot of industry artists. Uh, West Coast, obviously, artists. What's your um? What's your biggest stream single or your biggest stream song on on platform? Um, probably the one with me and Schoolboy Q, Babysitter. You have a song with Schoolboy Q? I got a song, bro. I got features with everybody. Mitchie, Slick. Tell me everybody you have features with. The, the people. Okay. Um, cocaine. I got a song with Mitchie Slick. I got a song with Nocturnal. I got a song with Schoolboy Q. I got a song with Tay F. Third. I got a song with Compton A. V. I got a song with A. D. Um, How did you and Schoolboy link up? We from the same neighborhood. Um, What's that song called? Babysitters. All right. Yeah. I it's out. That. It's out on. It's out on all that Spotify Jeez. and all of that type okay. of stuff. Um, and then I got a lot. I got songs with a lot of cats that. You don't know, you know what I'm saying? For um, sure. Working on stuff now. Uh, a lot of LA artists, a lot of LA bread artists, you know what I'm saying, what I'm working with, but. So you got this right here before, you just pretty much set your set the tone for this freestyle you're about to do too, just so you know. Correct. That's <laughs> why, I, and that's why I brought it the, the way I did. This, this is, this is where I'm from, man. I got I'm from you. Los hey, Angeles, you set the tone, bro, so I'm, from South now, Central, now so. I know we're getting some heat. Um, all right, so you have a book out, it's, Working these, it's called Land of No Pity. Yeah, South um, Central Story. So I had to definitely, we got to add the South Central Story because there's another Land of No Pity out there. So I was going through this real quick and I saw, we'll go through the chapters real quick. We got 1985, which is, I'm assuming, we're, um, the year you're born. That's the year a star was born. South Central, where you grew up. Correct. Survival, which I'm assuming is surviving in South Central. Correct. The system, mm -hmm. shit that went on there. Jail well, that, that's actually a foster. I grew up um, in the foster care, so okay. that's that's that system I'm talking about. Okay. Yeah. So that's that system. Yeah, that's when it's that title system. system, yeah, I'm talking about the foster care system. My my trials and tribulations of going through um, growing up in foster care. 
I had um, I've had a couple of guests recently that were in foster care situations too, and great people. Like you know, they I, I give you guys. I don't know how I, I I don't know how that's like growing up, bro. It's just yeah, bro. Not, not just, having parents. Period is mm-hmm. not having mom or the that shit is it makes me sometimes think like bro like how can i sit here and you know because everybody has their own problems right but mm-hmm. to sit here and see what you went through and your walk of life and i can't complain about you know my shit yeah. you know what i'm saying fuck no what my what my guy say he said uh he said i was in a sea of people with problems and i wanted to let my problems go and i sat my problems down i walked out the room and when i came back in the room my problems weren't gone i couldn't find my problems nowhere but it was somebody else's problems sitting there so it was the only thing left, so he had to pick it up. He Shut said up. when he picked it up, he said he damn near killed himself because he couldn't carry those problems. He said all he wanted was his problems back. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Everybody and that's how, this, that's how this shit worked, bro. I grew up with all my pops, you know what I mean? But my mom loved me, you know, I had my grandparents and Correct. shit like that. So I had yeah. a support system, you know what Correct. I'm saying? And that's what's important. It don't matter the titles. That sure. support system is very important that you have that. And if, if you don't have that, be that. Be that for somebody else. So we got a jailbreak? Which is another chapter. And these are all chapters in your life, I gotta assume. Yeah, of okay. course. Up into, obviously, up until date, I'm working on the second uh, iteration, but I gotta live a little bit longer. <laughs> so, if you guys wanna know more about um, Jarrell Walker, mm-hmm. definitely. The J author. Real the Realist. Yes, sir. Um, you guys can purchase his book. Let them know where they can purchase his right now. I'm gonna show it to you on the camera. It's called Land of No Pity, yeah. a South Central story. You can get that on, on Amazon right now. It's right here, guys. You can also get that on Barnes and Nobles. Boom, Barnes um, and Nobles. Com, or um, you can follow, obviously, when, when I get my social media information, you can follow me and get at me, and I will send you a autograph um, physical copy. There you go. So anybody that's listening to this show, you know how to get it. And when I get home, um, I'm going to be taking my 100 milligrams of edibles. Correct. And reading um, a few chapters a day. No problem. Maybe I'll get into the whole thing and read it all one time. It seems like it's a it's a, good it's a short read. It's right. a short. It's not long. You know cool. what I'm saying? So. All right, we got Jay Real the realist in the studio right now. Um, he just typed himself up and said that he's gonna have some bars. So you said it's oh, gonna be different. Is. It's gonna be different. Um, I mean, it ain't gonna be nothing you ain't used to. It's, it's gonna be different in the matter. It's gonna be real. You know. It's, it's Jay Real talk. I got you. Um, where can everybody find you? Stream your music. Let them know. At Jay Real the realist. Um, that's pretty much everything i make sure it's simple that way everybody can go straight there so that's apple music if artists want to work um, with you dm you yeah definitely dm me um if you on the facebook or whatever you can message me and all that i check all messages you know business is business um serious inquiries only um if you just want to collab on some greatness because you feel like we can vibe then i'm willing to work too don't hit his dm like you guys hit me and say yo because i literally fucking block you if you said that to me (laughs) don't say yo don't be like what's up bro i hate that shit bro like you know how many people just write yo to me it's like what am i supposed to yo bro what do you want from me bro or i mean i'll even take a less work you know what i'm saying you can put less work and i'm right what you want bro yo i fuck with your music i want to work with you i want to feature what is how does what is what's your cost bro or can we work do you want to you want to hear the track give him some substance dude but um also though man you know i got a real quick man i got a shout out because i shout out a lot of my la collabs you know what i'm saying but I definitely have been in Arizona, kicking my feet up in Arizona for a while. So, man, I got I to gotta shout out my guy, Rich, Rich Hefner. Shout out Rich Hefner, saying? bro. Um, Judge the Boss, you know what I'm saying? He was, uh, he was in my video. He was in my one of my seen him first in- Arizona shot videos. He was in the video. Um, who else? Uh, FaZe um, from The Maid, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to them. Uh, man. DJ Ray, DJ Don P, uh, DJ SP, DJ Rick James, you know what I'm saying? Like, just all my Arizona family, man. Everybody out here doing their thing. Um, I was in a studio with Futuristic the other day in Mesa. He was just up um, here recently. Yeah, we, we was just in the studio. Um, I was in the studio doing something. He, we weren't in the studio collaborating, but right. I was in the studio, and then he had the session after mine, and then he walked in a little earlier, so we got the jaw jack. So my thing is like Arizona got a great feel, got a great presence. You know what I'm saying? And um, I, I'm I'm feeling the vibe. I think there's a lot of great things, a lot of great artists coming out of here, man. And it's a lot of great promoters, got a lot of great individuals like yourself that's providing platforms. Um, you know, shout out my guy Loyalty over at the Loyalty Lounge in Scottsdale, um, doing a lot of things, bringing a lot of artists out to Arizona. Um, just period, doing shit other people are not doing, bringing artists other people are never going to see in Arizona because unless he bring them, 
So just shout out the the whole family. Like I said, it was a lot of opportunity when I moved out here, different from Los Angeles. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate it. Yeah, Los Angeles is really saturated, but it's still a great place to yeah, network. And, and it's still where you need to be. You still got to be there or Hollywood or Atlanta. Like I mean, uh, Atlanta New York. You got to be New York, Atlanta, or LA. Like you're going to have to go there. You got to go there. You know, but it, it's not where you have to be stationed. A lot of people think you got to be, you have your headquarters in Los Angeles, Atlanta, or something to, to do it. But no, nah, I, honestly, I love to drive to four, hour, four and a half hour drive away. I love to get away from the bullshit. I do all the time. I go to Vegas. And go to come back. I, uh, this my this my relief. Arizona, my, I get to come here and breathe for a second from the bullshit. Go to Sedona, Nobody knocking on my door. All Philly. that. Your flag. You know what I'm saying? Go, you know, but yeah. All right, bro. Um, where would Jay Real the Realist? You guys know where to find him. Um, I'm going to listen to that track with Schoolboy Q. That's huge. Yeah, I know, I know I mean, you're from the same place, but, but to I mean, our world, track, that's big. The thing you know about saying? it like, is, it's like we did that track before you knew who Schoolboy was. Well, that's what I'm saying. You know what so, I'm like, saying? to your world, you're like, that's a school. Yeah, day. that's like, like everybody right. in the hood is like. To our world, though, he's a big fucking artist. Correct, you know what I'm saying? Correct, so, we're going to look at him. Like, and that's big. the homie. And, and shout out uh, Smack, his brother Smack, that me and Smack finna do something. That's my guy. And shout out all the grooves, you know what I'm saying? All the 52nd Streeters, you know? But at the yep. same time, I, I get it, man. And that's why I lead off with that. So most people ask me, what's your most successful? So of course it's the one with school. Was, of course it's the one that's from the school, boy. That's just, the numbers are going to do that because the name is on the on the cover. So the numbers are going to spindle because of that. So. For sure. All right, bro. Um, let's hear the freestyle. Yeah, let's We're going to hit you with a random beat. We're going to make it happen. Yes, sir. Let's go. All right, guys, we got South Central's own J Real, the realist in the studio. Yes, sir. He about to drop some bars. We're going to do a freestyle. So this is the Matty Ice Show. We're going to hit you with, uh, with a nip beat. Let's go. Yes, sir. Rest in peace, neighborhood nip. Dedication. Shout out Kevin. Yeah. May not have a lot of things, but I know a lot. And I see the plans and schemes, and I know the plot. With a cup full of lean and a soda pop Where a brother make it to his dreams if he know the route I'm coming from a town where the queens bring the soldiers out And the realest convene over reef of smoke With the OG send your ass to the liquor store For a half pint of Hennessy, some finger roll I seen the real die young, haters die old I know brothers lose respect over what they mouth talk But the wise is a menace sit in front of liquor stores Telling stories of their glory from the back of 64s I know OGs that know me from putting in work And young brothers that'll never know the struggle and hurt Young queens Growing up, never knowing they worth Cause Big Mama's dead and gone Never gave her the words I bury the seed, let the pain grow And I just keep it on my mind like a kango I flash like photography, the image of a match So I just wanna take it and break it, break it and match, y'all I just wanna make it forever, chasing the cash route Tired of the struggle, depression making me lash out War in the streets got me feeling like it's my last hour And if I ever see them all, it'll be my last time That name a price I haven't paid Stripe I haven't worn My mother is dead and gone My father followed alone Now I'm feeling alone the children are looking at me like, Daddy, where are we going? To the top, I am hoping. Bills piled at the dope step in this dead, I am choking. Working this nine to five, and Lord, it feels like it's hopeless. Daily stress to the coping. Terms of my release ain't no drinking, so I am focused like, what? Another notice, pink paper say it's passed through. Hardships we passed through. Child care won't take my kid, they say he passed through. They say it's over a week, I think it's past two. But I'm trying to keep it cracking like these cashews Save a name for grace, why don't you save mine? And if I had one wish, I would've saved moms So she could really see the fire in my daughter's eyes Two personalities of these boys, just some Gemini's huh. Now give me greatness, cause I'm worth the payment You can argue with it, but you cannot change it huh. South Central, baby, not supposed to be here I made it past 25 in endangered species huh. Backwoods smoking, I just elevate Niggas walk the stage, but never graduate Underage fathers in the streets Trying to feed the babies, fuck the books Nigga hit the block, I'm trying to read the pavement Police lights blaring in the rear view Am I going, am I shooting, what's the clear view? Decisions, we make them real quick Can't have my mama praying at that pool pit Daughter calling my phone, need money for school trips sons growing up to be me and i'm the influence huh. they say that money is that motivation so we keep a few bears just to show we made it Woo. we're going up yo bro yes. you're fired yo, you know got south mean. central zone right now yes, la sir. rest in peace to uh to nip you know yes, we got sir. the flag right there slim 400 nip marathon the homies, continues man. bro the marathon let's continued go. today for sure let's go you went crazy bro drop some bars yo follow my guy right now jay real the realist on the gram Groovy. make sure you check out his music he's a real one we went up today um and then also land of no pity go get that you get the book go Definitely. crazy run it up he gonna sign it for you this is the biggest show for artists this is the matty show
Shout my family, Bel Air, at the Music, Rose. Yes, sir. We did it again.